A New York school district is facing a major lawsuit over students' First Amendment rights. And seven major school districts in one state have policies in place to help children change their sex at school secretly without parents finding out. Joining us right now is Parents Defending Education's Director of Outreach, Erica Sanzi. Good morning to you, Erica. I want to start with this lawsuit that your organization filed against this New York school district. And this is over its new policies. Tell us what those policies are and what your lawsuit states. Yeah, we have major concerns about um, the First Amendment violations here. So the district policies violate students' First Amendment rights because they discriminate based on the speaker's viewpoint. They compel students to affirm beliefs about controversial topics, whether or not they actually hold those beliefs. One example would be um, the topic of gender identity. And um, they also have codes of conduct or harassment policies that compel student speech on these controversial topics. So if the student isn't willing to affirm the district's viewpoint, um, they face official punishment they face official punishment and an example would be something like if a student says you know sex is binary or if a student says that uh, males shouldn't be allowed to compete in women's athletics they can find themselves in trouble um, simply for stating that opinion what kind of punishment uh, could they face you know that is a good question and it really does vary um, it can be anything from detentions suspensions um, but certainly, again, it what it's done is it has chilled speech. So what you have is you have students who now feel like they have to self-censor um, during the school day yeah. and even off campus because these policies extend to students even when they're not on school grounds. I, I did read that as well. Um, this involves something called speech codes. Uh, I don't I've never heard this before. What are speech codes and, and specifically what does your lawsuit state? Again, so the speech codes are really kind of what they sound like. It means that you aren't free to speak your mind. It means that you aren't free to um, state your sincere beliefs on certain topics. It means that you have to affirm whatever it is that the people in charge believe to be true. So when I say it, it sounds like I'm talking about a dictatorship, but in some ways that is how the school district functions when they have these speech policies. And so your lawsuit is saying that this is infringing on their First Amendment rights to free speech, and that's kind of the basis of your lawsuit, right? Uh, Correct. Parents submitting education. Okay, I want to go to New Mexico real quick uh, while we have some time here. Parents there really riled up after learning seven major school districts have policies to help students change their sex identities in the classroom secretly and only allow school officials to inform parents after that transformation has happened. And that's when the child wants to legally change their name and school records. First of all, what did your investigation reveal? How did you come about this story? So um, we had filed public records requests to a bunch of districts in New Mexico just to get a sense of what their policies are on um, gender because it, cause what you just described is what we're seeing you know, all over the country. I think we've documented now over 18,000 school districts serving 11 million students who have policies that say that if the child wants to change their gender um, at school, that the school is not to um, let the parents know. So any accommodations, if the child is going by a different name, using different bathrooms, different locker rooms, et cetera, um, that information is withheld from parents. And what we discovered in New Mexico is that in these seven districts, um, we were able to document that that is in fact their policy as yeah. well. And now transgender activists say this is important to protect kids from their parents, which I know you've discussed before that that then it's more indicative of something that goes well beyond a secret transition. But then I see a lot of critics are also saying, what about protecting vulnerable children from the schools themselves? What are the laws here? So everyone who works in a school is a mandatory reporter if they truly believe that a child is in danger in their home. So when these activists say that any child who keeps a secret from their parents, you know, must live in an unsafe home and their parents are dangerous, it's sort of time to call their bluff. They don't really believe that because they, if they really believed that, they'd be contacting social services and they never do. Um, so, and the other thing is that 
parents it used to be that the that the that the terrible negligent abusive parent was considered the outlier because they are the outlier but what we've noticed with these policies is that these policies almost treat all parents they they take that outlier negligent parent and they make that the default so they sort of broad brush all parents with that as if a child keeping a secret from their parents as a teenager is some new phenomenon uh, the last thing I would say is that when a school district facilitates a social transition, they are engaging in what's called a psychosocial intervention. And you cannot engage in psychosocial interventions with other people's children without their um, consent and without notifying them. And that is the law there. Paris of Ending Education's Director of Outreach, Erica Sanzi. We appreciate you joining us this morning here on the National Desk. As always, have a great weekend. You too, Jan. Thanks. Thank you.